Land grabbing is a phenomenon that is growing all around the world and is affecting developing countries in particular. Brazil is a particular victim of this trend in which, by some accounts, 11% of the territory of the large country is already compromised in land that is uh, operating in this manner. Many other countries around the world talk about the right to the city. The UN in particular pushes a lot for the right to the city, but in very few places that I know of, they really integrate it very explicitly in their magnum letter for the country as, it, as Brazil does. And what these movements, the social housing movements advocating for uh, the right to the city are doing is, is redressing that trend because they put a land to a collective use as opposed to a, a, a private, very commercial use, which is what we traditionally see in regular land grabbing. Even under, con under more friendly conditions of governments that were more progressive until very recently in Brazil, members of the movement and the movements themselves were subjected to persecution and sometimes enormous aggressions. Imagine what they are facing now, that the government is really very rightist and wants to do away not only with these movements altogether, but all of the other social safety net that have become very robust and very traditional in Brazil. Even they want to mess up with the constitution itself, and if they have their way, they would do away with the right to housing and the right to the city. So it is a type of justice that doesn't talk about a, a, a crime and, and the need to punish a person that perpetuates a crime, uh, but, but that, uh, that wants to bring about justice for the person that suffered a loss and the person uh, that committed also that occurrence. They have had success in some of them in buildings and in the occupations of peripheral lands in some of the cities in Brazil because they force for the representatives of the government, particularly the mayor of the particular city, the landowners to come to them, to the table with them in order for them to figure out a way out of this conundrum that they create by occupying the land illegally. Because yes, they occupy private property, but that private property, they do a lot of research about and they select it because it's out of order with the law as well. So it's a private property that hasn't paid taxes, property taxes in a while, and that is not serving the social function that is mandated by the Constitution. In that sense, the landowner or landowners are out of order with the law, out of sync, and they need to come to terms with the law, and the government in and of itself is mandated to produce housing for the people because housing is a human right. And if they haven't done so, then they are out of sync with the law as well. So if they recognize their part, their responsibility, in creating the problem of the lack of housing for the poorest of the poor, then they are sometimes willing to do something to redress those conditions. And that is how some of these occupations have been able to be flipped around to be converted into social housing projects. These social housing movements need a lot of support of people in professions such as architecture and urban design and urban planning and also law and sociology and social work, very many that can bring into the pool, the pooling of the technical resources and uh, expertise that they have in order, for example, to provide a good spatial organization for the occupations. From the start of the occupations, they happen in manners that are organized. They are organized spatially, then they are also organized socially in the sense that they create you no, know, the group that is in charge of sanitation, the group that is in charge of uh, food and, and all things associated with food production and distribution, the, the team that is in charge of security, 
or transportation or whatever else is, is of importance there. And uh, in that same sense that social organization happens spatially, they also need to realize how is it that they can make the most out of the opportunity that a particular piece of land, of land provides. And architects are, are very much uh, uh, allies in that, in that function.